Welcome to a tutorial but on BitC8. In previous videos, we've been paying attention to items. Items are one of the concepts within BitC that are used up as part of the interaction. We have seen how during that used up portion, at the end of the interaction, the item becomes part of an inventory. And we can track inventory using the inventory tool and see how many items we've interacted with. We also know that we can have Bitsy say the item count, the number of interactions we have done, as well as use a branching list to respond to that particular item count within the inventory. However, what if we approach things a slightly different way? What if there's a situation in which we want to do multiple interactions, but we want to do them with sprites? So as we know, a sprite is something that sticks around. So we can interact with a sprite multiple times, but if we interact with an item, we use it up and it disappears from the room, the kind of subsections of a story or game. So if we want something that sticks around and we want multiple interactions and we want to track a value that's not an item count, how do we do that? Put a completely different way, is there something that we can have some control over, increase or decrease the amount of, that's not an item? Yes. We call that variables. So over in the inventory tool, we've been paying attention to items. Right next to it is something called variables. So as we start here, I prepared this so we can talk through how to use them. And I added a variable, button zero and button one, both with initial values of zero. So what I wanna check in this particular example is the amount, or to say the number of interactions with two different sprites. So remember, as we interact with items, they're used up, they get added to the item count. There are some situations, though, where we might want to interact with other things and keep track of those values. And that's where variables really come into play. We can use items and item counts for many things, but there are some situations where we want other values that we're keeping track of during a game or story that are not quite items, not quite things we would interact with, just values we want to track. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Sprite right here, and I'm gonna shift over to button zero. Over here in button zero, I'm over here in the dialog tool. Notice it says button zero is equal to button zero plus one. You have interacted a total of, and this is an example we saw in a previous video, say, say value of button one. This is that say value again, this time for a variable, and I'll show how I did this, and times. So one of the things I showed in a previous video is we have lots of different options among the dialogue tool. We can create dialogue, which are all these little black boxes, page breaks, which push us to a different dialogue box, as well as different lists, sequence, cycle, shuffle, and branching, as well as some item and variable actions. So we saw in a previous video, say item count. What if I want to say variable value? That works exactly the same way. In fact, what I'm doing is something called change variable value up here. So I'm saying every time we interact at the beginning of the interaction, increase the value of button zero, which starts at zero by one, tell me the, tell me the total number of interactions, say it right here as part of say value of button zero, a number of times. Now, on a completely different sprite, sprite button one, I have the same thing set up over here with button one. So button zero for button zero, button one for button one. This means I'm keeping track of two different series of interactions, two different variables that aren't items. That is, we can continue to interact with sprites which won't disappear from the room and now keep track of those values. This really opens the door of creating more complex projects that have different goals, potentially different tasks that can operate within a room. But before I go too far, let's see this in action. So if I play and I interact with this, I've interacted a total of one times and we have one times and if I interact again, we've got two times. Now, the reason why this is particularly important is we saw a problem can occur if we rely too much on items and item counts. When we work with items, they are used up as part of an interaction. They disappear from the room. But the increase, the using up part of it, doesn't happen until the end of the interaction. As we saw in a previous video, if we ask an item for its current item count during an interaction, then it will always be wrong. During the interaction, it will give the previous count. 
So if we were to attempt to pick up T and we asked it for an item count, it would say zero the first time, and then it would be always off by one. Whereas with a sprite, and particularly with a sprite in a variable, we can always have the correct value because we're updating it as part of the interaction instead of at the end of the interaction. So put another way, if we want to keep track of data and interactions in particular, variables are the better way to do it. If we care about the number of things we've picked up, then we probably want to do item counts. So if we're picking up something or collecting something or gathering something, that might be a better choice to use items and item count. If we're dealing with a number of interactions or dealing with other data, we probably want variables. Both of which are find, found within the inventory tool. And we have our options of items or variables now to keep track of data in different ways. Again, if we're collecting things or gathering things, probably want items. If we're keeping track of other data, we probably want variables. Both of which are now available to us as we continue to build concepts within Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.